My name is Rich Bloom. I run the OTT business at Vimeo. Vimeo OTT is a one-stop solution for companies and creators to run a streaming business. It's a white label platform where we provide the technology and tools comprehensively, including a website and branded apps for mobile and connected TV so that creators can just focus on creating really good content, marketing their service and building a community. We support subscription VOD or what, what people call SVOD, transactional VOD, TVOD, live pay-per-view. Uh, we support some services that are free that require registration or might be part of a broader membership. Uh, and then we do support advertising to some extent. However, about 90% of our business uh, are supporting creators and companies running SVOD services. Uh, we power in the aggregate thousands of apps and websites across several verticals. We have the most traction in media and entertainment, which is generally where we think of YouTube and other creators fitting. Uh, sports, performing arts, fitness, faith, online learning, and education. Examples of some of our customers using Vimeo OTT are Criterion Collection, Martha Stewart, Les Mills, Jazz at Lincoln Center, and a lot of well-known YouTube creators, and I'll walk through that in a little more detail. Overall, creators and companies using Vimeo OTT make hundreds of millions of dollars a year in subscription revenue through our platform. So this is a meaningful business for them, and it's a meaningful business for us. Today, I'm going to focus primarily on the opportunity for YouTube creators, at, although it applies to some other creators as well, but in particular, YouTube creators to launch a subscription business and talk about how Vimeo can help them do that. Most of this is going to be applicable to anyone interested in the SVOD ecosystem. Uh, so I control the slides. All right, so in general, just to start, the subscription ecosystem in general is growing at a rapid pace. So across various industries from 2021 to 2025, the subscription business, subscription industry will have doubled, and it's growing at a rapid clip in the OTT space. The second point here is, sorry, it's really important, that's why I'm screaming. Uh, so this second point is really important. It's over, it's often overlooked in various types of businesses, including the content space. It's much more efficient, uh, and effective to expand your relationship with your existing customers than to bring in new customers. Despite this fact, the majority of businesses, and I would include creators and other content, others in the content space, focus a disproportionate amount of their resources and time I'm bringing in new customers. Now, this is when it comes to YouTube and other platforms, this is partly because you're somewhat limited in how much you can get out of building an additional relationship with your audience and further monetizing it. And that's where a subscription business really opens up a lot of opportunities. And then in addition to that, running a subscription business just brings much more predictability in your revenue. You know how many subscribers you have. You often have people signed up for a year. After a little bit of time, you can really predict the lifetime value of a customer. And that brings a lot of value in running a business, including a content business. And then once you have these subscribers, you own that relationship. And that opens up a lot of new opportunities that you don't have on platforms where they sit as an intermediary between you and your fans. All right, before we dive a little bit more into this, I'm gonna show you a brief video about Vimeo OTT.
so several YouTube creators are thriving using Vimeo OTT. Examples of some larger YouTube creators launching subscription and running subscription businesses with us are Dropout, Zeus, Sidemen, and Taskmaster. I want to be clear, this isn't an either or situation. It's not a question of should you abandon your YouTube channel and other and social media channels to start a subscription business. Running a subscription business is additive to YouTube. It's a way to grow your revenue and your community. YouTube's an incredible platform and people are building amazing businesses on it, but it has limitations and challenges for creators. First, many creators are reporting recent decreases in CPMs. And in general, with YouTube and with the ad ecosystem in general, CPMs are going to fluctuate with the market. That creates a lack of predictability and causes challenges for, for running a predictable business. Also, on, on YouTube, you don't have a direct relationship with your creators. You might have some ways to communicate with them, but you don't own that relationship. YouTube owns that relationship. Similarly, you don't own that data. YouTube owns that data. There's also limits on creative control on YouTube and other platforms. Uh, it's an ad-supported business. Any ad-supported business have to have a lot of rules in place to ensure that they have brand-safe content on their platform. And that creates limits for creators that have an audience that might want content that don't fit into the, those, those somewhat narrow structures. And then the last thing is, on YouTube and other platforms, the algorithm largely dictates what fans see and how many people get access to your content. On the other hand, with a subscription model, it gives creators an opportunity to deliver a direct premium experience to their most ardent fans. Creators own the relationship directly with their audience. They know their names. They get their email addresses. They can communicate directly to them. They can send them push notifications. They also own that data, and that data is really valuable. It also frees up creators to just create the best content that their audience wants without having to worry about an algorithm and without having to worry about restrictions on what types of content they can create due to being ad supported. This opens up the ability for creators to just create the best content that their fans want. We've also heard a lot of creators say on YouTube, they're hesitant to experiment with new IP and new content because they don't know how it's going to impact how they do with their algorithm. And that's another advantage of going this route. Uh, and then the last thing is the economics for running a subscription business are far, far different than what you're looking at with advertising. With advertising, it's all about scale. It's natural that you have to, you know, you need to keep engaging your existing audience and keep bringing in new audience to grow. And it takes a huge number of viewers and dedicated followers to build a meaningful business. With a subscription business, you can run a meaningful incremental revenue source if you can convert 1% to 5% of your YouTube subscribers to being paid subscribers. That's the general range we see for YouTube creators. On average, it's about 2%. And a little bit later, I'm going to walk through the economics of a subscription business versus CPM business in a little more detail. All right, so uh, Vimeo customer dropout, formerly known as College Humor, is a great success story. Uh, of someone who's built a subscription business with Vimeo OTT. They have about 15 million YouTube subscribers, yet by far the biggest part of their business is the subscription business they built with Vimeo. They initially launched their own SVOD offering a few years ago. They had a homegrown solution. And after having some challenges with that, they moved to Vimeo OTT. <laughs> this, this has allowed them to rely on us for the technology, for the tools they need, and for support, and they just focus on creating great content to their really engaged audience. That's hilarious. Building a community, which they've done at an amazing pace, and marketing to that community. And what they've actually found is their, their most hardcore creators are happy to be paying them and actually reach out asking for ways that they can pay them more, which is something we'll help them do. All right, so what type of content works on a subscription business 
for a YouTube or other type of creator. It's not, it's not simply taking all the content you already have on YouTube, putting it in your own app and website and suddenly charging money for it. You need to show differentiator and you really need to drive your free users to have an incentive to pay for your content. First and foremost, what we find most successful is creating exclusive content that's only available on your subscription channel. Typically it's, you're using your same, same talent you're using already. Um, maybe stepping up the production value, but often it's very similar content, but you're making it exclusively available on this channel. The other thing that works well is windowing, which is an old school media model where you're taking content and you're making it available on your paid channel, maybe a week, sometimes as little of a day before you're making it available on YouTube. For your most enthusiastic fans, that's going to be a nice added benefit. And then the third thing is taking footage you already have behind the scenes footage and bloopers is something that fans love seeing. And then a lot of our customers a few times a year will run a live streaming event. And those look different, uh, but they create excitement. It's a great way to pull in new subscribers. And Vimeo offers these really easy to use intuitive live streaming tools. And then once you have your content on your platform, what these creators are doing is they're using the audience they have on YouTube. They're using the audience they have on social to promote this content and promote their paid channel. And they drive users to their website and apps and they build this business. So now I'm, I'm going to walk through the economics of launching a subscription business. In this example, we're assuming we have a YouTube creator with a million subs on YouTube. So they have a million paid, million free subs. What I'm going to walk you through applies where you can, you can plug in whatever number of subscribers a creator has. Like I talked about before, we see an average conversion rate of 2%. So if you hit that average rate out of your million free subs, you have 20,000 paying subs. Here we're assuming a monthly subscription fee to subscribe to your service at $6. The range we see for typical YouTube creators launching these channels is, is $6 on the low end and $10 on the low, on the high end. And you typically charge, you have a monthly option and then you also have an annual plan where you might give a little bit of a discount. But here we're assuming $6. So at 20,000 subs at $6 each, you're making an incremental $120,000 a month which equates to $1.4 million a year. This is really, really meaningful revenue. And again, you can go back and see why somebody like Dropout and other creators are starting to focus more and more on the subscription business being even the bigger opportunity. At a minimum, it's a big, meaningful, incremental new revenue source. Another way to think about it is versus CPMs, right? So with a CPM model, on, on YouTube, you're getting your rev share from YouTube based on every thousand views. Let's assume you're getting a $6 CPM on YouTube. A anyone who's familiar with the YouTube ecosystem right now, that's probably on the higher end for most creators. But for ease, let's say it's a $6 CPM. One way to think about this is you can either get another thousand views on YouTube and make $6, or you can convert one fan to subscribe to your service for one month and make that same $6. And when you look at it that way, it just, I think, really shows the value of really focusing on how can you provide enough value and interesting content and market to, to change that dynamic where you're really trying to drive those most ardent fans to pay versus trying to get another 1,000 views a month. <laughs> Sorry. The one other thing to keep in mind here is in addition to the revenue, you can't underestimate the importance of having that direct relationship with your audience. It gives you more control. It gives you opportunities to build community and it gives you more monetization options, which we're seeing a lot of creators do. And you see in the creative ecosystem in general, there's much more of a move to try to sell fans, merch, other e-commerce products by running a business like this, you have their email addresses. You can send them push notifications and you, you now have a customer list that you can remarket to and monetize and engage in other ways. All 
All right. So we've walked through the high level benefits of a creator running a subscription business. Uh, now I'm going to give you the unbiased view of why Vimeo is the best option to do this. So we're offering a comprehensive platform. We've established ourselves in the space as a leading platform for creators to do this. It's a comprehensive solution where we're really giving the creators all the technology, tools, and services they need to run a business, and they can just focus on the content and marketing community building. We provide content management tools, transcoding, a global CDN. We provide a white label branded website and apps. When I say white label, most people know what that means, but it means to the end user, it appears like the creator themselves have launched this app. There's no indication that it's powered by Vimeo OTT. It's a direct relationship between the creator and their audience. We support apps across iOS and Android mobile, I connected TV, apps for Roku, Samsung, Android TV, Apple TV, Fire TV, and Xbox, and we'll be adding more platforms later this year. And typically for somebody who comes to work with us, from the time they sign up to the time they go live across all these platforms and launch their business is 90 days. For anyone that's gone through the process of launching a mobile or especially a connected TV app, especially across all these different ecosystems that have their own code bases, that's a very, very aggressive timeline and brings a lot of benefit. And then once you've launched those apps, typically you have to spend a lot of time then updating the apps, improving the apps, and then inevitably you have platforms that unexpectedly reach out and say, hey, we have a change that's coming in 60 days and you need to do product and dev work to update your app. Our team takes care of all of that. You also get the reliable and world-class video player Vimeo that supports live and on-demand with support for things like 4K. And then we handle all the payments and management of your subscribers. So we handle payments on web, and within the apps, we're enabling in-app payments that flow through your apps. Uh, and, we again, we support SVOD, TVOD, live pay-per-view. Uh, you can also run a freemium level. So if you want to, as a way to get users into your ecosystem, you can let people register, get access to a small amount of your content, as a creator, you can choose to run ads for those users, and that's a great way to give people a, a, a test of your content and then upsell them to a paid account. And even for those who don't upgrade, it, again, gets you that data and that direct relationship. You get their email addresses, their names, and you can engage them in other ways, even if they don't subscribe to your channel. And then one of the biggest differentiators is we give 24-7 global support not not just for creators running the platform, but for those end users. So when you're running a subscription business, there's a lot of customer service issues that come up. People have payment issues. People have refunds. People have questions about content. Invariably, you're going to have technical glitches here and there. So suddenly run a subscription business and deal with that customer support is a huge headache. As As part of our service, we our global customer support team handles customer support for those end users. So that's it to to wrap it up. Creators need to explore building a subscription business, uh, regardless of whether they use Vimeo or not. Uh, we we believe we have the best option in terms of the quality, reliability, completeness, and ease of use of our platform. Uh, it looks like I'm at time. So if anybody would like further information, there's a QR code where you can get more information about Vimeo OTT. There's also about six of us here. You can see people in Vimeo, sweet Vimeo outfits. If anyone has questions, feel free to come up to me or them after the panel. Thanks a lot.